Hello, my name's Arnold Daniels, class of 1985. Went to school with, with David and was on a track team with him. And my father-in-law was his track coach. David, David Wooten as an athlete. Now, again, early on, I wouldn't necessarily call him an athlete. He participated in a lot of different things. And I think what really turned him on, when we were in middle school, my father-in-law, Coach Tolliver, came down and tried to find some kids that were crazy enough to try pole vaulting. David, Bryant Dyer, Chris Carlisle, and quite a few of us went out and actually tried it. Not many of us were any good, so we all kind of faded away, but that's where David, Bryant, and Chris Carlisle kind of got the bug for, for pole vaulting. Uh, David finally hit his growth spurt probably in his junior year and really came about. Started getting stronger, not necessarily faster, but at least stronger and a little bit more fierce, uh, fearless and was able to go to the stronger heights. So his senior year, things started changing a little bit more. Both him and Bryant tended to trade off who was winning each meet. I think almost every meet they tended to win one. Uh, toward the end of our senior career, uh, senior season, you know, Brian and, and David were going hard at it. You know, each of the meets, they were soaring way ahead of everybody else. Both of them had that same goal to, to reach state. Brian had made it last year and David knew it was his turn this year. They get to regionals and they both jump very well. David ended up making it to state and Brian went as an alternate. He came in third that year at region. So David did everything he could. He knew what Whatever coach would tell him to do, he would work hard at it. And uh, he was able to come away with the bronze medal that year at state. So I think one of the biggest reasons that David was successful as a pole vaulter and really probably successful uh, in his career afterwards is that he was a very hard worker. And he knew that whenever he went to people for advice, he would take that advice and work hard at whatever recommendations that they gave him. And as he got older, he also got stronger he got mentally more focused, and part of what really helped him is he really was a little bit fearless. Uh, so as he, got, as he got higher, you get some vaulters that start getting a little nervous as they get 15, 16, 17 feet. David really didn't have that fear because he had the confidence in his training and his education that he could get over those heights and, and be able to come down safely. David was very special as a teammate. Not only was he always willing to give encouragement when he wasn't uh, competing, but also he was always willing, is there anything I can do to get better? So not only was he wanting to improve himself as a vaulter, but he would look to see if he could help out runners and other things. Uh, if there's anything he could do with timing, if he could help coach out with anything, he was willing to do it. Now, after running the 400, he wasn't willing to go out and run for us anymore, but I think if coach had asked him and really needed him for a meet, for us to win district, I think he'd have stepped up and ran again. David has told me multiple times through the years that if it hadn't been for Coach Tolliver, none of this would have happened. Uh, he probably would have ended up in another sport like tennis and just failed miserably at that. So, so David, I definitely would like to congratulate you on this honor. Uh, you know, I've already congratulated you at different times during your career. Congratulated you recently when your son qualified for the Olympics, and uh, I know you're you're doing well, and you, you definitely have uh, come a long way since the scrawny little kid that I met in fifth or sixth grade. So.